Guy Sharon and Clint podcast. I like it. Well, good evening, everybody, uh, and welcome along to our second ever podcast. Yesterday's one worked; it was playable, so we thought we'd do another one. Oh, you've already made a huge mistake there, Clint. You're supposed to say hello because "good evening" <clears throat> makes it seem like people can't listen to oh. a podcast anywhere, which they can. The possibilities are limitless. Podcasting is the future. Okay. Yes, you can listen to us morning, noon, afternoon, or evening. In the toilet, in the bath. Don't take your pod, iPod in the bath, though. That's why I broke my computer. Good nondescript day part or setting, everybody. And welcome along to our second ever podcast. It's going to be a cracker. Um, today on the show, we a um, had a, <laughs> a white trash cracker. Yeah. <laughs> we had you had to have too much cracker. We had a visit from Technolo Guy on the show today. There's a drinking game going on, which is um, drink every time that I say I'm from Nelson. Yeah. It'll happen quite a lot of times during the show. We don't... We're not... Just, just so we're clear, we're not telling you to do that drinking game from this podcast. No, but, but hypothetically, personally, I imagine hate how drunk you'd be. I hate. I didn't even. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. I, I actually hate drinking games. But uh, if you are going to do one, that that's would be a good an one absolute to do. lie. I don't even drink. Yeah, but you've played non-alcoholic drinking games yeah. with me before when I was drinking. <laughs> what we, game played did the, you play? we played this game that I invented called Shaz Dog, <laughs> and it involves a basketball and a basketball hoop. And to play Shaz Dog. You have to, um, you shoot the ball and there's like a line of you mm. and it's not allowed to bounce. And if it bounced, then you got shaz dogged and you have to drink. <laughs> so every time you shoot, you if you're the next one in line, you've got to get the rebound and just keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting. <laughs> <laughs> the record for shaz dog was, what do we get up to? 19 hoops. Shaz dog was actually very good at shaz dog. <laughs> not shaz surprisingly. Dog. Dominated. And I was the only sober guy at that party, and I and I also play basketball, and I was terrible. So there you go. He was. If he did drink, he would have been hammered on uh, Chaz Dog. Um, Chang's here as well. <laughs> you all right, Chang? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, sweet. Here's the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't give a shit what you have to say. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the edge. This morning, guys, I went to the gym. Good and on I'm you. basically just telling the story so I could point out I went to the gym, hashtag paleo life. I have never actually had anything paleo in my entire life. <laughs> you <laughs> no, just I finished have, eating a cupcake. I do. <laughs> I, what, is sugar not paleo? No. Oh, shit, I'm doing it wrong. Anywho, I've got this real bad dilemma, and it's such a bad dilemma that I've even got some theme music. Hit me. sounds like I'm doing something sexual at the gym and sadly I'm not but I go to this gym class and there's always this same girl in my class and she always always stands in front of me and when you go to do the squats she's wearing these like blue pants and clearly she doesn't do the test that I do and I try on your gym pants which is squat under the fluorescent light to make sure they're not see-through because every time she squats they go completely see-through, and you can see her, like, <laughs> lacy G-banger wedged right Gross. up her bum. Ooh. And I just don't know, because now it's got to the point now when you've seen each other in the class so many times that you do that, oh, hi, I can't be bothered doing this this morning. Yeah. But I don't know if we're at the stage of our relationship where I can say, look, babes, every time you squat, I can see everything that's going on there. I've got a question, having never worn a G-banger before. Are they? Is it a comfortable thing to wear to the gym? Not at all. I imagine it would be like wearing a piece of rope up your bum crack. I don't know. <laughs> I actually do <laughs> not. Cut un- in half while you're trying to squat. I don't understand how girls wear G-bangers to, to the gym. But my dilemma is, is do I tell her yeah. because we're at the high stage now or do I not tell her? Because mm. I don't want her to turn around and be like, stop looking at my ass. And I'm like, well, I can't help it. It's right in front of my face and see through it. It's, it's like talking to me. It's a classic dilemma. I'm someone with... A- not just a massive mouth, but massive teeth. <laughs> and I always have in my massive teeth like a jungle worth of stuff that I've eaten inside them. And people are so nervous about telling me, and I wish they would because I look terrible most of the time. But isn't it horribly embarrassing when someone does tell you? Yeah, like I, I think I would want someone to tell me. Yeah. But if it was a stranger, I would probably never be able to go to that gym class ever again. So mm. we need to know, you need to help me out. Do I tell this complete stranger that I can see everything that she's had for lunch every morning? <laughs> oh. Or do I just not say anything and hope that one day someone in her life will say, Babs... What's going some, on there? Put some undies on. Exactly. Are oh, the pants the issue or is the G-string the issue? It's just both. It's the combo. combo. It's just both. Like, <laughs> honestly, they are so see-through. But, yeah. And if I was wearing them, it would be the same thing. You can see her cellulite through the pants. Do you think she's doing it on purpose to be sexy? She, she thinks it's sexy. Because that would be awkward. It's <laughs> definitely not sexy. So mm. we're going to go to the phones right now. What do I do? Help me out. 
Oh, you totally need to tell her. But you just need to, like, go up to her in the same period of time that you'd be like, oh, I can't be bothered doing this this morning. And be like, hey, hun, um, just to let you know that your gym pants are see-through. Like, that's all you need to say. What if, what if she turns around <laughs> and then... Like, you don't need to tell her that you can see anything. That that would definitely be way too embarrassing. <laughs> be like, um, P.S., your gym pants are see-through. And then from there, she'll assume herself <laughs> in her own head privately <laughs> that you can see everything. <laughs> oh, it's just so awkward. Thank you, Jess. Rebecca, what do you think? I said I think that you should put the girl out of her misery. <laughs> No, but what if that I That sounds her, weird. That what? sounds like you'd be like, like, put her down or something. <laughs> no, if it was me and someone could see my butt whenever I did squats, I would be so mortified that I would want to know so that I could change those pants ASAP. But wouldn't you then be too scared to ever go back to the gym because you're going to be G banger girl? <laughs> well, no, I'm going to the gym to get fit, not for people to see my ass. That is true. All right. Oh, God, this is turning out that I'm going to have to say something. Fee, what do you think? I think you definitely have to tell her. How do I tell her, though? Like, what do I say? Um, I don't need to know what you have for breakfast, but if you're not comfortable <laughs> telling her, tell them at the gym. Get, oh. Tell them that you feel sick. Like, get the get the instructor to tell <laughs> her it's a-, a health and safety hazard. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and if, if you tell her and she goes, oh, I don't care, say, well, I do. <laughs> This or take true. a photo. I love, how, I love how seriously you're taking it. Like, this is like something we should register a complaint for. <laughs> oh, no, because it's awful. Call a justice of the peace. Register with the ombudsman. Something like that. Go through the official channels. It's definitely leading one way, so we'll find out. We'll see if we're going to get four out of four here. Mandy, do I tell her or do I not tell her? Um, you need to wait until the end of the class and then tell her like you only just noticed it. Oh. oh yeah, not like you've been seeing it for weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really that's really good advice. That's a mm. winner right there. And if she takes it badly, do I just avoid ever going to that class again? No, just go on the other side of the class. Take someone else's spot. Okay, <laughs> Mandy. Right. Just one more oh, question: God. Would you ever wear a G string to the gym? Um, no, and I think that's retarded. <laughs> I wear the special like gym underpants that suck the sweat away. Nice. Hey, <laughs> thanks for your call, mate. I I <laughs> I, I, I went to that too. She used the R word. I've been told off for using that. Don't use the R word, guys. I've learned out about that before. Oh, okay. You know, good good radio tips. Is this in your radio book? I think yeah, my new book <laughs> I'm publishing. Um, the text machine's blowing up. Most people are saying, take a photo I'm and not upload take- it to Snapchat. I am not going to take a photo. That is even more creepy. So I think it has now come to a head. I'm going to have to tell her. I'm going to tell her tomorrow. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> guys, Sharon and Clint on the edge. Okay. It's catching the hat, brainstorm time, guys. Get your notepads out. Get jotting down ideas. I want probably just going to reply to the text message I got. <laughs> <laughs> rude. How rude. I want listeners to call in, please. 0800 The Edge. Mm. Call in and contribute ideas to Catch in the Hat. Basically, if you haven't been with us since yesterday, I'm working on a project. It's inspired. Some would say heavily, some would say extremely heavily by the Tui Catch a Million campaign. Basically, I think their campaign's change, shortcharging people a little bit. Shortchanging, you only win $100,000 if you win the Tui Catch Catch a Million, where you catch the ball in one hand for a million dollars. You only win 100000 And your beef with this is that it's called Catch a Million, but you yeah. only actually win 100000 It should be called Catch 100000 Basically, it's they're pussying out. That's why I'm going <laughs> whole hog on this. Catch a hat from the edge. No, catch in a hat. I got to get the I got to get the catchphrase right because it's it's causing massive problems already. Catch yeah. in a hat is what it's called. Yeah. Hashtag catch in a hat. Unfortunately, people have pointed out mainly thirteen year old girls that catch in a hat actually spells on a hashtag um, cat China hat, which isn't quite as good. <laughs> It's not quite as good. It's not that, though. It's catch in a hat, just so everyone knows. Catch in a hat. You wear your special edge hat to the cricket game. When the ball comes your way, you take your hat off your head, you place it out, and you catch the ball in the hat, and you win a million dollars. So how, do, how many hats are there? There's a, a thousand hats. They're a everywhere. Hats. A sea of hats. It's amazing. I haven't decided what sort of hats we're going to have. I'm mm. thinking sombreros. Or maybe like a, a top hat, like a gentleman would wear, something classy. That sounds harder than what Tui are doing. I feel like this does need some like, lis- listener input. So if you have some, some constructive feedback, we'd love it on our hand. I've got a hat on right now. Yeah. Do you want to just hold this? Yeah. Just to test the feasibility of the game. Well, what are you going to throw to it? <laughs> I'll throw you something. What have I got? I've got, <laughs> I've got a mouse and a coffee mug. Someone just sent us some um, a, a box of Cadbury favourites. So okay. throw the booster. Nobody likes them. Bo- boost chocolate. <laughs> now, no one likes cherry ripe. I like cherry ripe. Okay, you ready? Yeah. This is, pretend this you is for a million dollars. We're testing out here. Okay, here we Throw it in his face. 
Oh, <laughs> it bounced right out of the hat. Exactly, yeah. but you were also holding it like a softball glove. How should I hold it? Maybe you should hold it by, hold the, it by the brim. Yeah, yeah. Here's a, here's a highlighter. Yeah. You know. Yes! Yeah. you got to okay. do the whole wrist thing. It's okay. that easy. A million dollars could be yours. Catching a hat. So, Semi-feasible. I think this is a bad idea. So we need you to help, as Clint was saying. 0800 The Edge or text us to 3343. Good idea, bad idea. Maybe some tips on how what hat hmm. guy, a guy should use. The, the, how are you even going to get a million dollars, though? Yeah, that's the other bit. Um, we don't have... I don't. You've just started here. We don't actually have that much money. We just got out of receivership. We're <laughs> lucky to even be getting paid. <laughs> That is quite a small issue, the if catch and hat was um, one. And I know we're talking about this kind of jokingly, but I'm dead serious about this, by the way. This is going to happen. Yeah. We don't, where are you going to get a million dollars from? Part of, the fu- part of the fun is that if it did get caught, that's part of the risk. It probably won't get caught, but if it did get caught, it would financially ruin the station. But you've got to put, you've got to put something up. Up to you know to capture the people's imaginations. Mm. See, we're already getting a text. Someone's just texted in, you're a dick. <laughs> so they don't think it's a good idea. And you've also brought back in a Where's a Fletch and Vaughan text. And that is because this is such a terrible idea. Catching a hat is taking over New Zealand already. It's one of those things where it's a good idea that could become a great idea with a little bit of thought. So, so you're trying to make cricket more interesting. I'm a little bit worried now that the million dollars could bankrupt us. Where are we going to get a million dollars from? We're going to get a million dollars from um, some... Uh, maybe some 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 people who can back the station. Maybe I've actually contacted a couple of high profile people already that could possibly give us some money, some finances. Really? Can we yeah. talk to them? Yeah, of course we can talk to them very soon after the break. I've got some recordings, and we're going to talk to my finances. Okay, high profile finances like people who actually have a million dollars. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to get some. Okay, I'll back your idea for a bit then, if there's maybe a million dollars involved. I'm going to go make a coffee. Catching a hat is sweeping the country by storm. We've got some colas on the line. <laughs> Hayden, have you got any good ideas for catching a hat, mate? Mate, uh, insurance, claim insurance on it. What do you mean? Why not? Like you, lost, uh, you lost a million dollars, you might as well claim on it. <laughs> can you do that? Can you can you insure money? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can... What, what happens if you've you got a company, right? Yeah. Yep, you've lost a million dollars. <laughs> I see what so you're he doing wants. Here. So your idea to cover a million dollars is insurance fraud. What are you doing? Well, we will think about that one, Hayden. Good suggestion, Ian. What's your thoughts on catch in a hat? The idea that is apparently sweeping the country by storm. <laughs> I, I think the trick is you, you don't be too specific about the the million dollars. You yeah. Just say like it's uh, when they come to collect it. Yeah. If they were to do it, which let's face it, it'd be highly unlikely. Mm-hmm. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! A million dollars worth of monopoly money. <laughs> First of all, Ian, as a South Canterbury cricket representative from the Oven to 14s team, I would like you to take that comment back because girls can catch. And second of all, I can't remember the rest of the things you said because I was offended about the girls can't catch thing. <laughs> he said make it make the fine print dodgy, which is quite a good idea. Like yeah. you go like you can win a million Japanese yen or a million yeah, Turkish that's the other thing, two other currencies like yeah. um, Taiwanese uh, money, whatever that is. Okay, it's 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 an idea, Ian, and we appreciate it. No bad ideas in a brainstorm. My issue is, oh. be it a million New Zealand dollars, yeah. be it a million Japanese yen, yeah. we don't have it. Like we don't we don't have the money. I've contacted some finances yesterday. David Farrier was doing a high profile interview here with Kim dot com about his new album, and I just bombarded him. Uh, I bombarded him with it, mm-hmm. and uh, he uh, he was kind of into the idea a little bit. All right, cut the shit, Farrier. D- D- Kim.com, it's Guy Williams here from Nelson. Yo, what's up, my man? The reason oh, I'm God. here is uh, I need to borrow some money, mate. Okay. I've got, I've got an idea, right? So you, have you heard of the um, Tui Catch a, Catch a Million campaign? Dude, you got to go to John Key if you want to have my money. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting on all my money. I noticed that John Key didn't um, uh, uh, confiscate the terrible personalised plates from your car. That's right. <laughs> Is that he let you have a car and some personalised plates and that's it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so um, so you, have you heard of the Tui Catch a Million campaign where you hit the ball into the crowd and you catch a million dollars? No. Have you heard about that in no, the cricket game? No, okay, so you hit the ball into the crowd yeah. and if you catch it one-handed wearing a T-shirt, you win supposedly a million dollars. One-handed without a glove? Without a glove. Dude, no one will ever f- do it's that. bullshit, it's eh? Impossible. It's bullshit. That's why I'm doing a better version. They can say you can win a billion dollars and it's never going to happen. Yeah, yeah. hey, no, that's why. I, that's where you come in, mate. I need a billion dollars or just a million dollars. I'm doing the edge catch in a hat, right? Okay, okay. You wear a hat to the game. Yeah. If you catch the ball in the hat, yeah. you win a million dollars. 
Now, dude, I make you a deal. Yeah. You beat me in Call of Duty. You yeah. Have one year to train, and if you beat me, you make a million dollars. I'm gonna go start practicing now. Thank you so much, Kim. <laughs> no problem, man. You're welcome. Bloody appreciate it, bro. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> Sorry for bombarding you, mate. Okay. So he he's not really into it because he's, no, he's not. He is into it. I've just got to beat him at Call of Duty, whatever that is. Not li- not likely to happen though. He's the best Call of Duty player in the world. That's but... that's a shoot 'em up computer game, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that could be hard. So, what else? Uh, what I reckon we should do is we should probably try and call the second richest person I know. Who's that? Hello, Chris. Thing. Hello, Chris. Yeah. Uh, it's Guy Williams here. I was trying to get JJ Feeney. No, you've definitely got the wrong number, mate. Uh, well, can I talk to you anyway? I'm trying to borrow a million dollars. Mate, if I had a million dollars to give away... It'd be awesome, but no. So what, we're doing a promotion for the radio station. Basically, it's catching a hat. It's like the Tui Catch a Million, but you've got to yep. catch it in your hat. Right. What do you think of the idea? You need a bloody big hat, mate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris, uh, so um, is there any money you can contribute to the fund? It, probably not. I'm, I'm unemployed at the moment myself. So, hey, uh, hey, maybe you, yeah. I can get you on board as marketing manager or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Chris, thank you, um, Chris, thank you so much, and sorry for um, miss calling you. I was trying to get JJ, but anyway, thanks, thanks anyway, bro. I'll give you a contact later about that marketing manager position. No worries. Cheers, bro. Okay, cheers. <laughs> How did I get the wrong number? I don't, I don't know. Oh, You've only worked here a few days. Did, You've got to work here at least six months to get Feeney's phone did number. Did JJ give me a fake face number? Fake number. Probably. Potentially. I'd give you just one. Give me Chris's number. Okay, so just so to sum up where we're at, I'm not rubbishing the idea. Sharon is still definitely a drawing board stage at the moment. Yeah, but it's are a you, prototype. Are you, mm. are you still into it? Yeah, I'm going to get um, some hats made tonight. <laughs> I think the person that texted in and said that you're a freaking space head is probably <laughs> the most correct out of anybody that has texted in. We'll see where we get to where that is. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the urge. Um, we're about to do your, new, your, your, your feature guy, Technolo Guy. If you didn't see Technolo Guy uh, last Last year, basically, it's a bit of a a bit of a spoof of the tech in a sec ads that play on TV One during the news. Yep, you'll notice that old TV One ads are all aimed at old people who are about to die soon. They're all for like Keith <laughs> Quinn's funeral plan and medical alert bracelets. <laughs> tech in a sec is probably the worst of the lot, where they try and tell old people um, how to use the internet on their smart- smartphones, and old people clearly have no idea. Their main advice is just switch things on and off at the wall. And uh, they'll be like, did you know that you can use the internet on your smartphone? And you're like, if you didn't know that, then why do you own a smartphone? (laughs) (laughs) It's the stupidest segment. So this is you uh, offering technology advice. I find it slightly ironic that you're offering technology advice when you're the guy who arrived at work after Christmas with a new computer because you took your old one in the shower. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't take it in the shower. I kept it in the bathroom to play some sick jams when I'm having a shower. Turns out the steam ruins laptops, you guys. Don't do that. Sounds like someone was doing naughty things in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, please that's what don't it sounds accuse. like no, to me. No, 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 In no, the no. shower. This, this, this is it, guys. The new hit segment, Technolo Te- Guy. <laughs> Computers. They're all around us. No, not there. That's the floor. That's a copy of Wild Hogs 2 on DVD. It's like you're just looking in the one place where there isn't computers to bum me out. Stop being a dick. Welcome to Technolo Guy, the new and exciting way to try and make technology seem accessible to old people, even though it's definitely not. Dad, if you're listening to this, stop calling me. I don't know where your email square disappeared to. If you can't figure out how to minimise a window, then you should be blacklisted and banned and arrested from computers forever. Gosh. Before I get too technological, I wanted to talk about computers. Computers were invented in 19... by Stephen Computer in a attempt to become an eternal virgin. He was successful in his pursuit. The first computer had a two-colour display and could only compute the numbers 0 and 1. It was super lame. I don't know why they even bothered. Stephen immediately set up a Facebook account, only to discover that he couldn't add any friends because he was the only person who owned a computer. After a slow start, computers took off. After a couple of years, there were over five computers in the world, and everyone set up a LAN and played Minecraft. It was f***ing sick. Now in 2013, in 2014, computers are more popular than ever. Did you know that over a thousand people in New Zealand use a computer every week? And that number is growing by the day. They are now the third most popular thing in New Zealand, behind YouTube videos of cats or YouTube videos of baby cats. Did you know that basic computers come in three types? Laptops, desktops and... Basic computers come in two types. 
and they can be used for a multitude of functions such as word processing, browsing the internet, writing spreadsheets, and looking at pictures of boobies, to name a few. Computers, they're new and exciting. Get amongst it. It's a trend that's surely going to take off. That's all for Technologuy this week. Join me next week when I talk about mouse pads. They're still cool, especially if you get personalised ones with photos of your whole family on them from that creepy place downtown. Guy Sharon and Clint on the edge. Sharon just found the best Twitter account I've ever seen in my life. It's called at Stop White People. For example, they post pictures like stop this lady and then it's a photo of a woman who's drinking a candle <laughs> there's also up there a mum who's feeding her dog Starbucks which is pretty great I love I love this so much it was so good and they've, they've done like a the best 36 it's like the 36 white people that just need to be stopped <laughs> and the first one on there is one of my personal faves it's like an Instagram post from this girl and it's a picture of her kissing this boy and then the caption underneath says my brother has the softest lips I love him <laughs> and then like kissing each other hey. and it just seems that incest is a theme because then there's this other lady and she's this is on Twitter <laughs> and this is a tweet and I'd like to I'm going to read this with her bad spelling <laughs> it's what's wrong with true love homosexuals can hey sex but I can't have sex with my son where's the equality <laughs> <laughs> she was supposed to say equality um, and that's just a whole lot of incest going on on there I love how these people are so backwards that they don't <laughs> see anything wrong with the things they're doing so all this this account does is it kind of trolls the internet for white white people who are making absolute <laughs> fools of themselves and then sharing it on social media for the whole world to see. My favourite one I saw was when they um, pulled off Facebook and it was a picture of this girl who'd put up a shot of... <laughs> she'd put up a pick stitch of her crying and in the pick stitch beside it was another photo of her leg bleeding. <laughs> the caption said, Talk about a rough Monday, lol. <laughs> Hashtag stabbed. Hashtag can't feel my leg. <laughs> Hashtag... Stop taking photos for Facebook and making pic stitches and hashtag go to the goddamn hospital is what I say. <laughs> That's what I reckon as well. I love hashtag stab. I'm going to use that for a lot of things. Hashtag stab. My personal favourite was the girl who got tricked when she wrote, I've learned that God communicates in the most unexpected ways. I didn't type this on my calculator. And that's a photo of the calculator. And on the screen it says, I love you, quote, love God. <laughs> What an absolute idiot. Someone at school has done this to her, and she's posted on her Facebook account, at Stop White People, guys. White people need to be stopped. This is the best Twitter account I've ever seen in my life. But we've actually got the list of the 36 um, on our Facebook page right now, so just go and look up the Edge Afternoons with Guy, Sharon, and Clint, and you can see the very first one there of this beautiful girl that instead of using body paint she or wearing a dress, she's just got about 150 slices of <laughs> processed, processed cheese. cheese and stuck it to her body. So awesome. It's I so love good. So go and check it out there and like our Facebook page, because when we hit 10,000, we're going to give away 10 prizes. Um, it's one of those accounts that makes you like instantly feel smarter about yourself. <laughs> like if you're, if you're having a dumb day, have a look at this account and it will cheer you up, no doubt. For some reason, it just made me want to see Guy Williams in a cheese dress. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to stick processed cheese all over oh, your naked gross. body. <laughs> Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. One thing I really like, the New Zealand Herald is doing, um, uh, talking about uh, being a New Zealander for the whole week. And one of the things they brought up was a new survey by Colmar Brunton. They surveyed a thousand people trying to figure out what it means to be a New Zealander. Mm. The top things that Kiwis reckon um, reflects the Kiwi identity is friendliness, which is lovely, isn't it? It's isn't nice. that nice? Yeah. Fifty-six percent of people agree that Kiwi stereotype of uh, with the Kiwi stereotype of a bloke who can um, fix anything, kind of the can-do attitude, is important to New Zealanders. Yep. Other things included are being proud, um, being easygoing, outdoorsy, versatile. These, I think these things all, all, all apply. What do they do you, sound like us, Sharon? Like, do they sound like me and Guy, the blokey bloke? Definitely not. <laughs> you can be quite blokey out of work, Clint, but yeah. like in work you're not. You're like, one, you're like one of the metro guys at work. What do I do out of work that's different? <laughs> play rugby, you well, fix I can't play things. rugby at work. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're, like, you, you're just more manly out of work, I Ch- think. Ch- Chang's here. Hello. Hello Chang. Yes, I became a New Zealand citizen last year, so... Hey, welcome. Oh, thank you. Kia ora. Kia ora. No, my and hi to my. Oh, okay. As a new New Zealander, mm-hmm. what does it mean to be a New Zealander to you? Because I grew up in Fiji, um, the freedom to vote... Wait, Fiji? Yeah. You're so Chinese? The, yeah. Chinese Fijian? Yeah. That so is awesome. There's no freedom to vote there, so yeah, and Yuck. the freedom of speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So I think those are two very important stuff. New Zealand is one of the first places um, to give women the vote as well. So we're yes. proud of being the first at things, mm-hmm. early adopters of gay marriage as well. I asked Sharon earlier what she said that um, made her, uh, what she thought of when she thought of being a New Zealander. And one of the things she said was sausages. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Which Why is pretty so? good. I said all blacks and you said anything else. And I was like, hmm, gumboots. Beer, sausages, <laughs> which is what I think of. What is tomato sauce? I feel you on that. There's a whole lot of different things. So we want to know this sausages. afternoon. Sausages. What, what makes you think of New Zealand? What makes you a New Zealander? So yeah. call us on 0800 The Edge or text at 3 to 3343. I can guarantee you the mad butcher would have rung up and said, sausages. <laughs> Definitely. And chicken mince. I can't do a what, mad butcher impression. One thing I think is not being a racist. I like New Zealand. It's, it's a real inclusive place, and we don't have many racists here. Are so you I think kidding? That's except, for the, except for the bit where we have quite a few racists. We've got a few racists. But a few? We have a lot. Compared to other racist countries, though, we're pretty good. I what, hate racists. So I think they should go back to where they came from. <laughs> <laughs> that's my what, theory. What I like about New Zealand with that bit is that when we have racists, we like to flush them out. Like, yeah. if, we, if we find one, we put them on the front page of the Herald, <laughs> and we put them on the 6 o'clock news, and it's like, found you, you racist. <laughs> oh, God. We're getting so many good uh, t- texts and calls in. I love the people who are in the Briscoes Lady and stuff like that. And mm. That always reminds yeah. me of being a New Zealander. It's an important part of it. Yeah, that is a good one. Connor has called up on 0800 The Edge. What does it mean to you? Uh, dairy industry is quite a big one for me since I've been farming for about two years now. Oh, oh, okay. oh that's a good one. So cows and, and milk powder. A, lo- a lot of people have texted in sheep shagging. <laughs> that's not a dairy industry. Oh, that's not dairy that's industry. Wool that's wool that's and different. That's lamb separate. and all that sort of stuff. Thank <laughs> you, Connor. Deanne, what does it mean to you? Uh, wearing candles all year round, no matter what the weather. Heck yeah. Uh, it's not wear them in the summer, but keeping them on all the way through winter makes you a New Zealander. It does, and even people that wear jandals with jeans, I tried to get in on that fashion, but I just kept <laughs> tripping up on my jeans. Also, weirdly, no, it's how good. We- it's good. Weirdly how we think genitals are okay for everything, like when you should be wearing a <laughs> pair of safety shoes, and like I'm going to mow the lawns with a really fast-spinning blade, yeah. um, chuck my genitals on. Yeah. There's I wear my genitals into the office and then get really upset because I have to put my grown-up shoes on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that is a good one, Dan. Actually, that is true, because I've got a friend named Gurney, and he like used to be a builder. <laughs> Gurney. And he, his real name's Carl. Good and he built our deck. It's beautiful. But the whole time, um, I walked out and he was using a nail gun, and, and he was <laughs> he's wearing genitals. And I hear this, ah, oh, shit. And I was like, Gurney, what'd you do? And he goes, oh, I was put a nail through my foot. And I was like, oh, that's why you should be wearing proper shoes. He's like, she'll be right, Shaz. I like, carried on. I was like, that's so classic New Zealand right now. Dion, what's your one? Mine is because um, I'm, I'm a Maori, so I'm a Kiwi born and bred. Yeah. Um, but I love the old traditional hungi in the ground. Classic. Oh, right. yeah. Mm. How often do you do them a year, Dion? Uh, well, I used to do one one every year for the last five years mm-hmm. yep. for Christmas, mm-hmm. and I decided to give it a break last year. Oh, well, give it next, a break. next uh, time what? you have one, Dion, make sure you invite us round. Definitely, I will. And yeah. how yuck does food taste out of the oven, by the way? Ugh, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good hungy. We, ne- we definitely need to do that one year. Let's have a hungy party. The, the, oh yeah, absolutely. I, I'm from Nelson. I've never. I just realised I've never had one. Have really? you? No, I've only seen them on TV. Oh, they're delicious. <laughs> Actually, so so beautiful. So weird, eh? Being from Nelson, I'm so white. It's and embarrassing. Our, and our last one on 0800 The Edge, Tim. What would? What does it mean to you to be a New Zealander? Uh, two words: yeah, nah. Yeah, 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 no, 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 yeah. We kind of rate ourselves, but doubt ourselves at the same time. Mm. It is so confusing when people say that too, because you're like, well, what do you mean? Yeah or no? Nah? I'm so confused. Exactly. Oh, thank you, Tim. I, lo- for calling I love the things that people have texted in. People See have texted you, in things like, <laughs> people have texted in things like, the road works and working on the road. Actually, that is true because when they <laughs> no, when they filmed that uh, Yogi Bear movie in New Zealand, yeah. and then they had some scenes where New Zealand's road works were on, and everyone got real excited. They're so like, "Yeah, New Zealand road works and <laughs> New Zealand road signs." It's Absolutely true. true. It is. It's it's an iconic part of New Zealand. And what about um. Towing your wheelie bins down really long driveways, bro. Yeah. That's what someone's written. Hooking them onto your tow bar, yeah. <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> so much easier. Walk. Yeah. Absolutely true. Being a tall poppy is another one, which is which is true. A bit of a negative one, but yeah. we like to cut people down. We do like cutting I, people down. I, I when you say we, you include yourself my, in that. I, 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 I once <laughs> said that Lord was the new Hal Bazaar guy. Boy, did she prove me wrong. <laughs> 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 in my face for being a dick. Okay, hey, kia ora, New Zealand. We're Thank sh- you for, for your interaction. We oh, do, you got another one? We do have one okay. more before we end, and I think this one deserves a prize. Abby, what is your suggestion? 
Did you want to turn Abby on, babes? <laughs> Do I? <laughs> I sat there and watched it last night with my dad for the first time. Say what it was again because um, I didn't turn your, your phone on in time. What is it that makes you feel like a New Zealander? Uh, Shorty. Oh, <laughs> oh Shortland Street, yes. <laughs> and what, was, it, it, was it the, your first time watching Shorten Street last night, Abby? Uh, um, I'd watched it a couple of times but never really got into it. And I sat there and watched it with my dad, who's in his 40s, mm. and it was still a lot of the same people. And he goes, is that who I think it is? <laughs> oh, Grace Kwan, because she's yeah. back having a baby with Chris Warner. Do you know what makes me yep. feel like a New Zealander? Abby's voice. That is a classic, <laughs> a- a- that is classic accent right there. <laughs> Abby, what are you, Abby, what are you having for dinner? Um, I'm having fish and chips, I think. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nailed it, even, nailed we it. We didn't even script that. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. So there was a 6.2 earthquake yesterday, which yeah. is quite a quite a significant shake, enough to knock the uh, bird off the off the roof of the Wellington Airport. That of was a disaster. Yeah. Oh, have you accepted now that that fell down? I, don't, I still don't think it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that you brought that up because it's quite a contentious issue. I was just trying to glaze over it. I reckon it was weakened and then security lowered it down. How? How did they lower it down so fast? With um, the um, the obvious, the bird winch. <laughs> they have to. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. The point is, is that I um, I don't want to bring up where I'm from again because people are texting and going, I'm going to start a drinking game every time Guy says he's from Nelson. <laughs> anyway, I'm from Nelson, which is a quite... Uh, um, you said it twice in like two seconds. I'm so proud of Nelson. <laughs> Three times. <laughs> it's a place that uh, gets a lot of earthquakes and we are not prepared for it <laughs> at all. <laughs> Classic New Zealand. We built our hospi- hospital. If anyone's ever been to Nelson, you drive in Four when, times. You, when you come in. The hospital is right on the fault line. <laughs> so if there is an earthquake, our hospital is completely gone, completely. <laughs> oh. But um, one of the weird things about being Nelson, I'm not used to earthquakes anymore, so when I go back for the holidays, it's always weird how chilled out people, when there are, uh, chilled out people are when there are earthquakes because mm. it's really relaxed. Like, I'll be freaking out. I'll be like, what's going on? My dad will just be sitting there and he'll just hold his tea dead straight and just drink drink down a cup of <laughs> tea. Drink through it. The perfect example of New Zealanders who are just used to earthquakes who are just chilled out as happened just the other day. This is so fun. Oh, just yesterday. During the um, races, um, a Greyhound races, where the commentator just kept on going regardless. It's pretty funny. Check it out. Lined and ready. Race 11. Everything's shaking here, I'm afraid. Looks like we might have uh, a bit of an earthquake going on here. A very big earthquake, in fact. Um... We've got a very large earthquake going here. The race is under underway here. Uh, unfortunately, the monitor's fallen uh, on me, but I've managed to pick it up. I can tell you, Al Jedder's in front here. I'm not going to be able to do much of a call of this race. <laughs> so dedicated to the race, <laughs> the but studio is following around a part, uh, around him. It is a classic, got like clear, clearly from Wellington though, because I lived in Wellington for eight years or whatever, and you sometimes would hear them coming. So you'd hear it, and you'd be like, "Oh, there's going to be an earthquake." Only once in the eight years that I lived there, and we used to get the real little rumbles only once was i actually scared and ran to my parents room like you just carry on with life i love how that guy continued the call as well he just kept it so professional i wouldn't do it i'd be out of there no but and also people would forgive you for that like they, they wouldn't hold it against <laughs> you that you decided to stop calling the race while there was a natural if, disaster if you want to see the video on youtube the cameraman as well is following the stupid greyhounds <laughs> while the picture is bouncing up and down because of a 6.2 earthquake well there's a lot of Legends. angry people that are sitting at the tab watching that race they <laughs> like, don't want to upset anybody they're like they're like this um this major earthquake isn't going to affect my addiction to gambling <laughs> What, is, exactly. um, what do the greyhounds do? Because that, that also is like, because dogs and stuff usually sense those things and got quite angry. So they started running. <laughs> did, they, did they run faster? They probably, they probably set a record. That's a very, very good point. Nothing will distract them from that white rabbit, like even an earthquake. <laughs> I'm getting that goddamn rabbit what's, every single what's time. What's in that rabbit? Because it must be awesome. That's Isn't it full? <laughs> it's full of like. Treat like meaty treats, and they it? sprinkle it with crack, <laughs> dog hey, you, crack, you which is the, just like chicken. If you're in, if you're actually in, don't give dogs chicken; it can do really bad things to their parts. Very good point. Um, if you were in the earthquake yesterday, uh, hopefully you're okay, and all your stuff is okay, and we're glad that there were no major uh, fatalities or anything from the earthquake, right? Yeah. 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 There you go. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the edge. Oh, we said some breaking news oh, coming to the it. studio. Breaking news. What was the breaking scandal news noise again? And this time it comes from our boss, Leon. Hi, Leon. Hello. Hello. Now, you're on holiday at the moment. Uh, first week yeah. of our show. No big deal. We don't need your support. Um, but you're up <laughs> Thank in, you. You're up in Russell, and we understand that you've just overheard a conversation about a big Hollywood celebrity in town. That Tom Cruise is sitting out in the back with Bruce Willis. It's a, it, look, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so you don't Whether think... Whether it's true or not, but there is, there's been a... 
No, I'm not putting... No, Leanne... Put, put Leanne Nothing. on. Put, yeah. put your no, wife on. No, I'm not putting Leanne on. Put your put wife on. on. She's had far too many gins to go on here. Put your wife on. Put her on. Put, put her, her on. on. Put Leon, her I have on. access oh, to your hi. office. Hi, Leanne. Now, you're our boss, Leon's wife. Um, you yes, just... I am. How are you? We're great. <laughs> now, you've just heard a conversation. I'm hopping in my bikini and I am swimming over to the big boat. <laughs> are you? Because <laughs> I heard that Tom Cruise and Bruce Willis is on it. <laughs> Is that it? is a true story. Bullshit. There were some locals and they said that Tom Cruise and I am looking at the big boat and I am swimming over. So is it actually, because I was in Russell a couple of days ago and there was a massive super yacht there, Leanne. Is that the one that's still cruising that, around? That is the one, Sharon. That is it. The massive super yacht. It is just over there. You you get out in that rowboat, Leanne, and you confirm for us. And if you if you do find Tom Cruise and Bruce Willis, can you please um, get them to call our show? And pash them. I will get them to call your show. I will tweet you, Snapchat you, and Facebook you. And pash them. Pash them. Of those two. This is awesome. Thank you so much, Leanne. Enjoy your holiday. Oh, thank you very much. Do you want Leon? No, we don't no, at all. Never. Ne- never again. I, thank, I thank you so okay. much. Bye. Okay, love you guys. Love Bye. you too. I, I'd just like to point out that's the first time Leon's wife's ever come on air. Yeah. Legendary. I don't think she's in any state to be rowing a boat. <laughs> <laughs> you know You know what's funny is, Leanne, <laughs> do you want to say this? Um, Leanne and Leon's daughters in the studio right now. <laughs> can so, you just can you just uh, confirm for us, Sydney? Um, do you just think your mum might be a little bit drunk? M- mum sounds a little bit booze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mum's been on the G and Ts. Yeah, actually, yeah. she Snapchatted me a picture of a mud shake earlier. So. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so we don't know if this news is substantial or not, but if you do hear on the grapevine that Tom Cruise and Bruce Willis are in the country, you heard it from us here first. Well, you heard it from our drunk boss's wife <laughs> first, and we just happened to broadcast it. Oh, let's not say she's drunk, because she might not come on the show again. If it's good enough for Twitter, then it's good enough for me. It's a fact, guys. Put it on stuff.co.nz. Yay! Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. Cool, there you go. Thanks, guys. That was the podcast. That was Tuesday's show. Thanks for joining us. Hey, before we go, um, because we can't do this live on air, but we can do it on a podcast, technically. What? There's been a list that's come out from the Broadcasting Standards Authority. Oh, no. Of all of the most unacceptable words on television and radio, <laughs> and they're listed from number one to 31. Oh, is, great. Is there a C word there? Well, obviously. <laughs> obviously. I, should I read the, li- the list out? No. Should I read? There's only one word that I won't say. Well, you've got to say them all or nothing. No, you I don't want to say one through. word because it's racist, and I don't want to be racist. Oh, you don't want to drop an N bomb. Like, you, yeah, no. you mean a gook? No, it's not that. Dang. Okay, I'll, Dang. I'll, re- I'll read all of them, but I won't read the okay, top go. two. Okay. Can you go fast, though, so that it's not like yeah. so mm. there's less time to be offended? Okay. C word, N word. That's a start. And when I say the F word, that's a homophobic word, okay? Because okay. I don't want to say that word either. Okay. Right. okay. Motherfucker, Jesus fucking Christ, cocksucker, get fuck, fuck, <laughs> fuck off, F words. <laughs> Slut, whore, cock, retard, wanker, asshole, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dick. Jesus. Piss, bitch, prick, piss off, God, bastard, bullshit, bullshit, crap, bloody bollocks, bugger. Wow. I am currently writing my broadcasting standards <laughs> complaints <laughs> from Guy Williams to John Key. <laughs> Please reprimand the show as soon as possible. Well, that has been our podcast for today. Thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it, especially for listening on iTunes. Please yeah. give us a, um, a, give a, us a rating, rating or comment. Yeah, and we'll see you back tomorrow <laughs> for another edition of the Guy Sharon and Clint Show. Bye. I just wanted to say all the things that you wanted to say, so you had nothing. <laughs> <to say. laughs> Good move. Love you, babes. Love you. The guy Sharon and Clint podcast.